Good afternoon, I'm Pastor Ted Hardy, and welcome to Divine Love Fellowship, 505 North Willow Street, Harrisonburg, Virginia. Our phone number is 1-540-433-2386. Our service times are Sunday morning worship, 10.30 a.m., Children's Church, 10.30 a.m., as we're meeting at Blue Ridge Christian School at 100 Dinko Avenue in Bridgewater, Virginia. So we invite, we invite you to come and worship with us, come and experience the awesome presence of God in such an awesome, awesome way. And you know, we're, we're approaching the Thanksgiving, or the, we just finished the Thanksgiving, now we're approaching the, the Christmas season, and you know, I pray that Christ is in everybody's Christmas this year. You know, this is what it's all about, was Jesus Christ, and that's that, the central theme of Christmas. Whether do you know that he was born in a manger, he came to, to save us from a place called hell, and I just thank him so much, and I, most of all, I thank his father for sending his son, that through him, through him we have eternal life. Again, thank you people for all your prayers, for all your support to this ministry. We have this month to take care of, all the months in, in uh, 2013, we have pluses. We never had no minuses. Sometimes it was only like 50 cents, 80 cents, but sometimes it was we was over like $50, $60. And I just give God the glory that we all had plus uh, plus months and give God the glory for it all. Again, continue to pray for us as, as you know, 2014, we want, that's going to be a soul saving time. Souls for 2014 is, is, is going to be is going to be our, our motto, souls for 2014, to reach as many souls as we can for Jesus Christ. And that's what it's all about, people, because that's the only way to make it to heaven, is getting people to Jesus Christ, the only way to make it to heaven, because Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the light, and no one comes unto the Father except by me. So, you know, again, thank you so much for all that you've done. Don't forget, if you know somebody that can't get us on TV, we're on internet. We have our TV program on internet. All you have to do is go to www.facebook.com, Divine Love Fellowship. Once you get into our face page and click into our TV program, you'll get to see the entirety of our TV program on the internet. So, you know, we have people that is watching us both. And I just, I just thank God that we're able to get this word out, not just through this valley, but on internet all over the United States and all over the world. And I, I just give God the glory for it. Continue praying as, you know, as, as for the remainder of 2013, we're souls. We're going to keep our eyes on souls. And 2014 is souls for Jesus for 2014. And I pray that you come and help us to reach as many people as we can for Jesus Christ. You know, it's, it's so awesome of, of all the things that I see Christ doing in and through individuals lives and you know it is so awesome when I see him take somebody like me and, and many other people that, that was down that was 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 out and everything else and he comes and he he puts them back together and he you know he polishes them up and and you know puts his precious Holy Spirit within each and every one of us and then uses us as a witness for him and that's just so so awesome as you know as we see this as we see this happening again don't forget, if you need a ride to church, give me a call, 540-433-2386. If you live down in the 602 area uh, or McGackiesville and you need a ride to work, call Barbara Freeman at 810-2456 and we'll, we'll try to get you a ride to church. I want to get into the message because I want to talk about is that God needs people, will we help him? And this is the, what the motto is really for 2014. God needs you. Every one of you he needs. You know, the Bible said, while we were yet in our mother's womb, we were called and ordained to be a prophet unto the nation. So God needs each and every one of us, each and every one of you. And I just pray that you let him use you in an awesome way, you know. I want you to, to, to listen to, to this message as, as I bring it forth, you know. And, you know, I, I, I want to say so many things because Christ... Like I say, Christ came to seek and to save those who was lost. And you know, and you know, hell was never designed for anyone, because it's His will that no one perish, but all come to uh, uh, eternal life. But you know, but everybody, and there's millions of people that is is moving. You know, farther and farther, I see it away from the Master into a place called destruction. And you know, who are they? You know. 
you know, and the sad thing about it is that it can be family, it can be, you know, wives and husbands and children and, you know, family members and co-workers and neighbor, neighbors and everything else. And the sad thing about it is, is I've seen them serve God all their life. And here in the last days, the closing hours, I see them getting caught up in such garbage that they're falling away, they're lost, you know, won't be able to do anything. Because why? Because they turned their backs on God and sought the things of the world and the pleasures of the world and everything else, you know. You know. And it's, it's our job to reach out to each and every one of these people. It's your job as a born-again Christian to reach out, you know. I know that uh, no one man or woman can save them all, but you know something? If we can all work together, if we can all work together with Jesus and, 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 and allow the Holy Spirit of God to flow through each and every one of us, and you know something we can make it. I want to read a, a verse of scriptures here from Psalms 40, verses 8 through 10. It says, I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, the law is within me. I have preached righteousness unto the great congregation, though I have refrained my lips, O Lord, thou knowest. I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. In other words, David told him just like it was, and it's what God wants you and I to do. Let us pray. Master, I thank you for another opportunity to be on TV, to be on internet, and I just thank you, Lord, for supplying the needs to the church. All the year of 2013, and God, I just give you glory for all of that, Father, and I just lift up your holy name because, God, if it wasn't for you, we're nothing. We're nothing, Lord, but it's only because of you that we are a somebody. And I just give you praise for that, Father. And I just ask that you anoint this message. The words that I speak, I ask that you pierce people's hearts. That will draw them closer to you, God. That'll, that they may give their lives total, completely to you, Father. To do what you have called each and every one of them to do. And God, let everything that I say, let it always uplift your name. Bring in glory and honor unto the King of kings and Lord of lords. As we ask it in your holy name, amen and amen and amen and amen. I believe God is, 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 is raising up the greatest army there is, ever has been. I believe God is raising an army with so much faith and everything else. And, and you know, I believe that God wants us to be part of his business. And what is God's business? Soul saving. That's what it's all about. That's what Jesus came to seek and to save those who are lost. And God says, you know, he says, if you will go forth, and he says, I'll help you. He said, you know, he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, even until the end of the world, you know. We're, you know, we're, 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 we are God's agents, you know. We're, we're, we're agents of his salvation, you know. We're God's partners. 1 Corinthians 9, 22, Paul said, What in, in the weak became I weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men that might be in all by means save some. In other words, you know something? All together, we can save some. You can save some. I can save some. The next person can save some. And if we just come together in unity, in unity, as a body of believers, that's why I have never, ever seen, and, you know, I used to talk to Mary Payne about this here before she got promoted to heaven. I always ask Mary Payne, why comes the churches can't get together? And I see it getting worse and worse all the time in these closing hours. And it's, it's so sad, it's so sad because, and, and the big worst thing about it is, I'm not jealous of any of my people. You know something, first of all, I didn't die for them, Jesus Christ died for them. I only point them to them. And I tell our people, you know, if, if, we're, not, if we're not having church, you know, if you want to go to revival, just make sure you're going to the right one. You people know the word of God, that, you know, that nobody is going to fill you full of false doctrine or anything else. And if you're not happy at our church, you know something, then find yourself another church. I pray a blessing on you. And I prayed it on many a people. You see, not everybody is for our church. Our church is a street ministry church. A reaching street people, helping people that in, in, that's in the streets, in the jails, in the hospitals, the nursing homes, the poor and everything else. And that's what our ministry is, and it always has been that. But you know something, we are after saving souls, and that's what it is. There's nobody in our church that's any better than anybody else. I'm not any better than the one sitting in the congregation. You know, we, we all are here for the same reason, to reach souls for Jesus Christ 
getting them to Jesus, having them born again and everything else. And if there's ever a time that we need to reach the harvest as God's labors, saints of God, it's now. I said, I know you, you people say, you know, I need to talk to them. I need to invite them to church. You know, I need to get, get to the grandkids, the parents, the spouses, and everything else. And you know something? But no matter what we need to do it, we need to fulfill that commission. We need to fulfill that condition. We need to do it. Jesus didn't even ask us. He told us in the last chapter of Matthew, he said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And lo, I will be with you always, even until the end of the world. But God said, I want you to go. I want you to go. And it, that, that's what we need to do. And yes, saints of God, there's a cost to it. You're going to go through some trials. You're going to go through some tribulations. You're going to go through tests. You're going to go through, you're going to be mocked. You're going to be made fun of, you know, something. But you know something? I would rather go through all this garbage and know that when the, my days are over, that I'm going to be with Jesus in heaven. Because you know something, he went through the most horrible things there was in his life for your soul and for my soul. And the best thing to do is, is, is when you don't know what to do, just talk about Jesus, about his mercy, about his love, about his forgiveness, you know. Stand up for him, keep on going on for him, you know. Saving souls in this lost world is more important to me than anything in this world. Anything in this world. Daniel 12 and 3 says, What those that are wise will say shine like the stars forever and ever. If you've got Jesus in you, you are going to shine like the stars. Hallelujah. And it's so awesome when people come up and they say, you know something, you, you know, I can see Jesus within you. I can see the presence of God resting in you. And that's what it's all about. And, you know, I, I just want to tell our people, let Jesus shine through you. What's the most important thing there is to do? And that's to do the will of God, you know. To, to bring the gospel, you know. Be like Moses in Exodus. You know, told Pharaoh, let my people go. He went in and said, we need Moses today, Exodus 3. He was standing before God and receiving so many things, and that's what God, what, that's what's the matter with us. We can do nothing unless God tells us. I don't say anything prohibitive or anything else. Unless God tells me. If God tells me to tell somebody something, I tell them. But if God doesn't tell me to tell something, I don't tell them. So many people, you know, after the service, they said, you know, why didn't you say something to me? Because God didn't tell me to say anything to you. I only say to people what God tells me to say to people. You know, we'll pray for you. I pray that, that you draw closer to God and everything else. But, you know, something we need to do only what God is doing us, you know. And we, we, we find... I find out every day in my life, as long as I lean to God and stay in the perfect will of God and trust God for my answers, you know something? It's so awesome. See, we can't do anything within ourselves, but the Bible said we can do all things through Christ Jesus which strengthen us. You know, seeing God use, it, you know, use people. And you know something? Without God, we're just, you see, we're, we're just like looking into the sun. You're, we're blinded. We're blinded, and you know we, we we can't. And the sad thing about it is, is 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 God so much wants His people to trust Him in these last days, and that's why you know that's the biggest thing that I face within our people. People, I want you people to get to the place where you trust God entire entirely, no matter what it is, no matter what it is. You know, in Exodus, six times, six times. He told Pharaoh, you shall know that I am the Lord. And you know something? God wanted the Pharaoh to know the Lord. He wanted the Egyptians to know him. You know, whether saint or sinner, God wants us to know him. And it's our job to take this gospel to a dark and hidden world. It's our job to tell people about Jesus Christ. You know, and that's the only way to get saved is to come to Jesus, because Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the light, and no one comes into the Father except by me. You know, you know, have you ever heard of the saying, you know, my grandma used to tell me, you know, you're only, you know, that you're only known by the company you keep. You know something, if we keep God's company with us, and do what we should do, wonder what people would think of Jesus. You know, I said, some of the people comes in, you know, and just before I start preaching, you know, 
while the kids is going to class, I always say, does anybody have a testimony? And some of them say, you know, that, that you know, that people says, you know, oh, you don't drink anymore. Oh, you, you don't dope anymore. Oh you, oh, you don't run around no more. I haven't seen you around. And, you know, it makes them feel so good because why? Because you know something? They're keeping the company of God. And just like I told one girl that got out of jail, she said every time she says something to somebody about church, she said, you know, they, they, they run up or run off. They make it. I said, honey, that's, that's normal. They did it all through the Bible. But you know something? We've got to keep on going on for Jesus. When people look at you, you should be a reflection of Christ. We all should. So what does people think? What does people think about what they see within us? Do they see the master within us? Do they see God's love pouring through us? Do, we, do they see God's compassion that is coming from us? Do they see all these things, you know? You know what does people see through me? Through me. When Moses was, 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 was learning about God, he told him something special in Exodus. Exodus 3 and 8 he says, And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and bring them up out of the land unto a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey. In other words, you know something? God was showing himself as a deliverer. You know something? He, he, in, in Egypt, Israel had not asked him to be deliverer. They worshipped other gods, but you know something? God delivered Israel by his own will and for his honor and for his glory. He saves us for him. He doesn't do it for us. God wants you to be saved. God wants you to come to him. And the only way to get to him is if the Spirit draws. Because the Bible said unless the Spirit draws you, you can't come to know Jesus Christ. So we, so we need to know. It's, it's a demonstration that... that, that that Christ is our Savior, you know, a living God who wants to save us. You know, God's business is with people. God's business is with people, you know. It's not with planets. It's not with money and possessions, houses, bank accounts, and everything else. None of these really things really make God totally happy and everything else. The only thing that makes him happy is when we go out here and we say, Would you like to know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? And then they accept Jesus Christ. The Bible said that all the angels in heaven rejoice over one sinner getting saved. So when you go out here and you talk to somebody about Jesus Christ and say he is the only way, the only way, and everything else, then you know something? That's ha that makes Christ happy. I know we need things and everything else, but you know something? We, we need Jesus more and more than ever, more than ever and everything else. You know, Jesus saves. Nobody else can do that. And we have that promise with God that God cares about people and God cares about you. He always did and He always will, you know. And it's not because, you know, of anything else. Even the Bible said when Adam and Eve was in the garden, the Bible said He came down every afternoon and had fellowship with Adam and, and Adam and Eve. He cares, you know. He, he saves people from a hopeless destiny. He, he delivers people from so much bondage, you know, and He invites us to walk with Him. And, you know, the word saved in Greek means healed, you know. And God promises both physical and spiritual healing. He hates to see us in slavery to the devil. He hates to see us down, you know. God did, when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, he didn't turn his back on them, you know. Too embarrassed to let other people see that what had happened to them and everything else. He drew closer to them. And, you know, something, he, he slew the first sacrifice and covered them with the blood. And then what is Romans 3 and 9? What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise. For we have before proved both the Jews and the Gentiles that are all under sin. Adam and Eve was naked, sinned, and scared, desperately trying to hide their shame and everything else. But God in His love and His mercy and His restored and, 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 and restored them to Him, and, and both physically and spiritually. And you know something? And then that's what he wants us to do. He wants to restore us. He wants us to bring us out of that pit that we're in, out of that miry clay, and set us upon a rock. The rock whose name is Jesus. You see, you got to remember one thing. Sinners can't save sinners. Only Christians can save sinners. All sinners are trapped at the bottom of the pit, and how can they pull each other out? Because they don't know Jesus Christ. 
But you know something? Our God can reach down and get them. And, you know, and God will use you to reach down and get them. What do you say in Isaiah 43, 11? I, even I am the Lord, and besides me there is no, there is no what? No Savior. In other words, it's only, only through Christ that we can get saved. You know, as we, as we, as we read the Bible and we read all these things and everything else, we, we see that, that the same pattern, you know, is repeated over and over. You know, God choosing people to work to bring others in. And this is the partnership, the partnership with God to bring deliverance to the world. You know, he commissioned Moses, go and deliver my people. And he says the same thing for you, go and deliver my people, go and bring them to me. You know, bring them to me, tell them that I want to live and dwell in the hearts of these people, you know. Here Moses, 80-year-old shepherd, God took him out of his comfortable life and put him back into Sheikh Egypt. doesn't make any difference how old you are. God will use you, he will anoint you and everything else. And take you out of your comfort zone and put you on the fire night of the devil. You know, I just thank God for it, you know. John chapter 5, verse 17, he says, My father worketh hitherto, and I work. Don't you think it's time for us to work? Jesus said, What? The harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. He said, Pray ye therefore for the labors. He said, You know something? He said, That's the only time that I've ever asked said I was going to pray. He said, pray for levers. And when, you know, when Jesus called the fishermen to follow him, they didn't know, you know, where he was, they was going to lead him. But they led him and uh, to the ends of the earth to save people. Are we ready to go? Are you ready to go? God needs us. People need you. Look everywhere around you. Look everywhere around you and you see people everywhere that is in bondage, that is miserable, that is worldly, that is, is, is just on drugs, alcohol, worrying, and everything else. You know, and they keep the psychologists, the, the counselors, the therapists, the doctors busy. Not to mention all the psych lines and all the stupid fortune teller stupid stuff, but there's only one deliverer, and his name is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. The Son of the living God. And I invite you. His priority is people. Our priority should be people. Only, only, there's just nothing else. When we stand before Jesus, he could care less how much money we had in the bank. He could care less how big our house is, how many cars we had, how many boats we had, or anything else. He only cares about one thing. What did you do with this Jesus, which is called Christ? And that's what the Word of God says. So what are we doing with this Jesus, which is called Christ? And how many people do you know that had his experience in all kind of problems in their life. And there's only one hope, people, and that's Jesus Christ. There is only one hope for everything else. Are we ready to be like Moses and deliver the people out of bondage? God needs you to do it. God needs me to do it. Nothing matter in this last crucial hour except souls. Souls. What souls? Maybe your husband, maybe your wife, maybe your kids and everything else. And you know something? You are the one. You are the one that could be that one to reach these souls. You say, what will happen if I don't? And you know something? That, then their, their blood's going to be on your hand. What do you say in Matthew 27, 24, and 25? When Jesus took before Pilate, he couldn't find fault. Verse 24, he says, what? And he took water and washed his hands. What saying? I am innocent of this blood. Verse 24, he says also, he said, the blood be on us and on our children. So if you disobey God and you don't be a witness and everything else, you don't bring somebody to church and they miss it, you know something? Their blood is on your hands. So I'm, I'm asking you, you could be the Moses that is leading those people out of bondage. You could be the Moses to do it. You know, Jesus Christ is getting ready to come. Time is almost up. As you look at the, look at all the, the, the newspapers and all the things that is happening, killing, stealing, committing adultery, fornication, uh, uh, abortion, lying, it's horrible. You could be the one that could reach that individual for Jesus Christ. Remember one thing, you can reach somebody that nobody else can. 
You see, God needs the whole body. What good is the hand without the, uh, the leg? What good is the leg without the eyes? Or the eyes without the mouth? You see, God needs the whole body. And you, as we accept Him, you are part of that body of Christ. And God says, I want you to go. Go you into all the world and preach the gospel. And God says, you know something, and I'll be with you always, even until the end of the world. So we don't have to worry about anything, because as we go, God's going to be with us. God's going to anoint us and give us that strength to overcome. God's not going to anoint us and give us strength to sit home in the recliner. What do we need strength in for? To do nothing? But as you go, and you tell people about the precious, precious blood of Jesus Christ, that saves a sinner like me. Mama Audrey always sings that, that song of church sometimes, Amazing Grace, how sweet thou art. And you know something, it, it saved a wrench like me. How many times in our life that, that we not even deserve Jesus? But through His grace and through His mercy, he extended it. He saved me from death many, many times. Saved you from death many, many times. Saved us from the devil tearing us and ripping us apart. You say, why? Because he needs you. I told you right from the beginning. I believe that God is putting a people together that is going to destroy the works of the devil. And God wants you to be part of that enemy. You say, brother, what do I have to do first? You need to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You need to repent of your sins. And accept Jesus Christ into your heart. And if you'll do that, yes, then God will use you in an awesome way. God will anoint you. So let today be the first day of the rest of your life. I want you to pray this prayer with me. It's a prayer to get you into heaven. This is the only prayer to get you into heaven. But this is also a prayer to start your life over. That you can get into the calling of what God has to do in your life. Pray this prayer with me sincerely from your heart to the heart of Jesus. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I repent and ask for your forgiveness. Come into my heart as I accept you as my Savior. And your word says, if I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, I would be saved. And I have done so. And I thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. This is the first day of the rest of your life. I encourage you. You want to get into the ministry, give me a call. 540-433-2386. We need people to go out in the streets, the nursing homes, the hospitals, the shut-ins, and everything else. Let's do what Christ has called us to do because time is close. Jesus is getting ready to come. God bless you. We love you, and so does Jesus.